Okay, here we go. Second. Cam is not quite straight. Powered Angel. Sorry. It's Powered Angel. Yeah. Alright. And is my mic working? My mic is working. Yay. Music go a little higher. I think. Alright. Very cool. I can believe. Yes. I believe everything is working. Huzzah! Alright. How are we doing tonight? We're gonna finish up this chainsword. Let's go. Uh, finish up... This chainsword. Specifically, actually. Uh... There's my... My camera in OBS is not responding as it should. Never mind, I thought everything was working correctly. This main cam. Refresh device. Hmm. Alright, maybe we'll go through some technical difficulties. Maybe. Maybe. Hmm. It's connected. Hmm. Aha. We've done it. Yes. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> we are. Nope. Get that wire back up there. If I could just have everything play nice, that'd be great. Just beginning of one stream. Just one stream is all I want. One stream where everything works. Okay. We're wrapping up this chainsword. Which looks pretty close to done, I know. But it's in, we're going to highlight the white armor and a little bit of clean up. And then we're going to pop a transfer on the shoulder. And then we'll call it uh, for that. Then we'll move on to his pistol arm. Um, oh yeah, before I get going on that. I'm gonna dry brush this and uh, insert the base done. So we're actually gonna get down to 
workspace. Gotta fix the focus. My camera wants to drift all of a sudden. Let's not do that. Hey, Moon. Of course, nerd activities are still going. What else would be happening here? Expect something cool like jocks or um, uh, who else are cool? Um, the popular girls. I don't know what they do with their time. I guess they just talk. Is that what that what happens? I, don't I was never. I was never on the inside of that. So you'll you'll have to tell me. Oh yeah, you're gonna be excited. I had my first raid earlier today. I am the jock energy, don't worry. Yeah, that, that, that makes sense. Giga Chad Supreme. Yep, that's you. We all know it. That's Moon. Moon is the resident jock. It makes sense, she's taller than me. Yeah, I got raided. Like, Twitch raided. Like, someone else that was streaming brought their entire stream into my stream. If you noticed, I have twice as many followers as last time you were in the, in the stream. Yeah, Twitch raids are a good thing. I'm I'm not entirely sure why they call it a raid, but yeah. <laughs> you know, another uh, streamer, uh, Crafty Dog Minis, came in, raided me with a party of nine viewers. So I went suddenly from like four viewers to thirteen. It was pretty. It was pretty sweet. I thought they were bullying you, and I'm like, minor. <laughs> no, no, no. You should know. If people start bullying me. Guess what happens? I bully them back. Alright. I'd like to say that is... It is... Finish the base. And then, in which case... We can actually... You know, actually I'm not gonna attach the rest of the body. Over here the base just yet because I don't know what uh, arrangement the arms are gonna be so we're just gonna go back to yeah, whatever go back to chainsword I'm gonna get some oh actually I did not even finish with the first round of highlighting on this so actually we're gonna do that before we get to the edge highlight so Moon how was your day Oh yeah, we're watching that thing tonight, right? Use a chainsaw to cut down trees. I mean, you could. It's just a chainsaw that's made into the shape of a sword. Busy and I've been doing a lot of community outreach. Oh, nice. Yeah, we were still watching that thing tonight. I don't honestly I don't remember the name of it. I'd never heard of it before. <laughs> what a uh, spirited away. Hey, Tone. You don't watch me. <laughs> nah, nah. I'm, wa I'm watching it. I still have no idea what it is. I'm, ac I'm, I'm actually googling it now. I have no idea. Oh, it's an anime. Oh wait. 
I have... S You're not gonna believe this, because I don't really watch anime, but I do believe... I don't remember when or how, but I think I've actually watched this before, and it was pretty awesome. <laughs> What's up, Tone? How, how's it going, man? Nice to see you return. I'm glad I wasn't that boring. <laughs> Alright. Let's see. Where are we? In this... Everyone sees Spirit will except, except Rusty. <laughs> Not too bad, another wor day of work from home. Haha, uh -huh, nah, nah, all good. The whole thing is to force and watch. Dude, we will force uh, Rusty to watch um, uh, uh, weird ghost um, anime. It's, it's an anime about ghosts, basically. Yeah, I only vaguely remember it because, man, I watched that thing over a decade ago. Where it, like, completely disappeared in the back of my memory because, you know, like I said, I don't really watch anime much. Oh, that isn't white on my pommel. That's my pommel coming off. Alright, I'm gonna have to fix that. <laughs> Ghost stories. <laughs> Yeah, it's effectively a long... It, it's effectively a um, Japanese ghost story in, in movie format. Ah, oh, yo, a bunch of my paint from earlier is coming off. Man, it's so humid in here. I got a dehumidifier going and everything. I don't, it don't matter. Jeez. Yeah, I'm gonna have to do some cleanup on this thing. Maybe I'll seal these guys in early just to ensure I'm not falling apart. Is this guy falling apart anywhere noticeable? Uh. I don't like it. I don't like it at all. Nah, this one seems fine. Huh. Dubbed one where it's all crazy racist? I don't... Um... I don't remember. I don't remember any racism. <laughs> I knew what was happening, so I assume it was dubbed. I don't know, maybe it was, in maybe it was just voiced over in English. I have no idea. Yeah, I don't know. I know nothing about about racism in it. To be honest, uh, it's new new to me. But you know what? To be fair, I don't remember any of the dialogue. I just remember that I, I kind of knew what was going on. That's that's all I got. All I got on that. Oh, tone, you uh. I mean, I guess you had work or some nonsense like that, but, you know. Uh, you missed my first raid earlier. That was cool. Crafty Dog Minis. Go follow him. I, I, I assume he's got cool stuff. I don't know, he came in here with nine people and doubled my followers, so. I'll give him the benefit of the doubt for that one. I mean, you can say nice one to me as if I did anything, but I was just doing my thing and then he showed up, so, you know. I'll think. Yeah, my test stream was Saturday, my first official stream was Monday, then the end of that was my laptop overheating, so Melee had to stop everything until Tuesday, uh, last night. So, yes, my first week streaming and I'm 14 followers in and the raid. I'd say it's going pretty good. Oh. I can also throw in, I got an inquiry on a commission, but they put the wrong email into the form, so... Um, and they said they were in the stream, but not who they were in the stream, so that's... I don't know. <laughs> kind of lost on that one. I, uh, I changed the thing on my website saying, hey, double check your email when you're putting in a form, because if you screw it up, we're both screwed. I mean, I hope so. The commission they had in mind sounded really cool. They wanted like a super high detail uh, Gravis captain in white scars with like free hand and everything. I'm like, this sounds awesome. I mean, assuming you're willing to pay me my rates, but uh, yeah, like I, I wanted to do it. 
You can see how it all looked in my head and everything. But, uh, yeah, I tried emailing them back with my quote, and it's like, nah, that email don't exist. What? I, I mean, it's gotta be a typo, because... It was only, like, 30 minutes before that I got the, uh, I got the form. Unless that guy hated the stream that much, decided to troll me, but that seems unlikely. <laughs> I mean, I've heard of weirder, but eh. In any event, we're finishing a chainsaw tonight. At least, at least a chainsaw. I'd like to get most of, if not the entire gun, uh, the entire pistol done as well. Get both arms done tonight. And if we get it done early, I throw a little Raven Guard painting in there too. You got anything on the hobby desk tone? You possibly guessed the correct address? Uh, so I mean it was like his first initial, last name, and then a two-digit number. So I mean, I suppose I could try other common variations of that number, but the one- the number that was given was... A... Uh... Was, uh, was like a common reference number. Like, I'm not, I'm not gonna give any specific details of it out, obviously, but it was like a, uh, it was a number that's the common reference, so I'd be kind of surprised if it was something else. So, I, I have no idea. No idea on that one. <clears throat> Yep, don't know. I can just hope that he might come back into the uh, same Venom Crawler. Nice. I can only just hope he comes back into the stream later and it's like, Hey, I sent you an email. And I'm like, cool. I Or send me a form. And I'm like, cool, because you gave me the wrong email address. You know, it's like, here's the Discord. Contact me there or something. I don't know. Okay, so same Venom Crawler. Finish up main buy section. Just need some of the Carabur Crimson. And some... Druchi Violet Wash over to me bits. I've not heard of either of these paints. What are these? It's just a strangeness. I'm gonna pop some flow improver to help with this uh highlighting here. Yeah. Or Citadel Shades, the reddish one, the purple. One. Okay. Alright, yeah, I I can work off that. Mentally. I can mentally picture reddish shade and a purplish shade. Yeah. Where was I? Oh yeah, I was working on the sword. Sword hand guards. Okay, the hand guards. I feel like I'm kind of dumb on this model. Like, is the handguard here supposed to protect from heat wash? Because it already has this whole chunk protecting the hand. Like, what's going on here? Why isn't there a hand, like a thumb guard on this side? Like, I assume that's the um, ignition rune or whatever they call it. I don't know. Warhammer, we're not here for uh, realistic weapon design. <laughs> or practical weapon design. I mean, the chainsaw in itself is not a practical design. Chain weapons would be terrible in real life. Anyone that's ever used a rotor, uh, not like a rotary, but like a chain or a, uh, like a chainsaw, a chain cutter, or um, a sawzall knows that uh, it'd be absolutely terrible using like a chainsaw. I think someone left because I was, I was bashing on the chains on chain weapons. <laughs> Here's the thing: I actually really like painting chain weapons. The chain teeth themselves are very fun to paint for me.
It's surely create more gore than a sword, which equals win 40k. Yeah, no kidding. That's all that matters. Mass, uh, maximum effect on target. That's what we want. My camera goes nuts. Okay, so I know you told me what f faction that Venom Crawler was for, but I already forgot because I'm terrible like that. What uh, <laughs> what army are you playing again, Stone? Because I'm a horrible person. <laughs> Black Legion, right. Yeah, that's one of the things that's, um, when I'm considering if I ever start a Chaos Army, like, one of the only things that's kind of holding me back from going Black Legion, it's like, well, it's just a bunch more black. It's just, it's more detailed black, which I'm already doing with my Tribal Raven Guard. That seems good, I gotta fix that red. Um, however, that red is coming off because of humidity in here. I guess I'm pretty, pretty sure anyway. Yeah, it's coming off because of humidity. Um, I think I might... I think I might go bring the dehumidifier into this little space of mine. You know what, yeah. I'm going to be right back, and then hopefully that will improve things.
I will school you all in paleontology. Don't threaten me with a with a good time. You don't even know. I see you're still uh, hyped about that Appalachian Mountains post. The head is too wise, the heart is all fire. One of Tumblr's rare moments of wisdom. Yeah, I got the humidifier, or dehumidifier going. Took a little while, I really didn't want to start back up again. Just didn't care to be moved. Uh, right. So, time to edge highlight. White scar. Goading him and talk about dinos. But dinos is a broad subject. Give me something specific to latch on to here. It's like, here, just start talking about, what was it, like 140, 160? Here, just start talking about a 155 million year long segment of human history. Tumblr is good, actually, weaklings can't handle it. No, what is that Tumblr is, is, uh, Tumblr is as female as YouTube as, uh, is male. Like, it, it's primarily female demographics in, in Tumblr. While YouTube's primarily male. Who is the best scavenger in the game? What game? Who is the best scavenger in the game? Yeah, I don't know what you're referring to, Moon. You're gonna have to help me out here. Hey, the only game I remember playing with you is Cards Against Humanity, and I won that. I dethroned the mighty Rusty. I really need to get a USB webcam so I can have a proper face cam instead of this ridiculousness where my th the best scavenger dino best scavenger dino I mean dinos being reptiles they're all kind of scavengers um well no that's not true there are uh, plenty of herbivores obviously Best scavenger. You know what? I'm gonna say I'm gonna. I don't remember their name, but I'm gonna say the ones that turned into mammals. Um, there was in the Triassic period a set of dinos that started uh, basically evolving hair and um, and uh, actually started caring about their young effectively and turn and turn into these um almost like hairless weasel looking things um and like that's the thing proto mammals and early mammals were only ever scavengers during the age of dinosaurs because the dinosaurs effectively didn't allow them to grow any bigger that's why they then exploded as soon as the dinosaurs were gone Are not gone really, but all the big ones are gone. I say that because birds are actually dinosaurs. <laughs> like, just straight up dinosaurs. Like, no, seriously, birds are beaked dinosaurs. Like, literally. They have all, like, they have, um, because we don't know for certain if dinosaurs were cold blood or warm blood, it's actually been a hotly debated topic for decades um so all of the traits we know for certain that made a dinosaur a dinosaur as opposed to other reptiles birds still have 
Like, they have um, the upright hips, which was the biggest uh, initial indicator. And, best we can tell, most dinos had feathers. Or at least a lot of them had feathers, anyway. Cross wari birds from Australia. They look like what Magic Raptor look like. Well, I mean... I'm not sure if I'm thinking of the right one. But, I mean... Emus? Ostriches? Uh... The terror birds? From... You know... Immediately prehistory? Like, terror birds... Were, were like, think of an ostrich, except... Which are already huge, by the way. Ostriches are massive. Think of an ostrich. Make it, like, three feet taller. And then give it a three foot long beak. That would, sl like, chop its preferred prey of pygmy horses. Of, like, dwarf horses in half. On the run. Oh, yeah. Tone's from Australia, Moon. So... Cassowary. That sounds more familiar. Well, I'm gonna look up a pick real quick. What is this? How did I get this other chat? What is this? Get here. Us, uh, berries. Bird. Yeah, those things. Yeah. That's a, uh, that's a sized down terror bird, effectively, and they are aggressive, they're nuts. Uh, and yeah, they're, you know, we still have dinosaurs. <laughs> They've killed people, I totally believe it. Dude, Australia lost a war against emus. Great, uh, the, not the great, but like the emu war. Right, it was emus, right? Like, the Australian military lost a conflict with emus. <laughs> but I don't, I don't think you had, like, an official spider war, though. That's the thing. I mean, at least not outside the movies. I'm pretty sure that was, like, a, uh, uh... One of those, um, what do they call it? Creature... Creature features? I'm pretty sure that was a creature feature, the spider war. The old, the old-fashioned, like, black-and-white creature features. <laughs> Dude, that reminds me of, um, that Magic School Bus episode. Now we're going back. Magic School Bus episode, where they're, they go into the black and white movie, and there's, like, this giant praying mantis going around, being the crap out of a 1940s American military. And to solve it, the bus turns into a giant spider, and I'm like, I like spiders, and I'm still thinking, this is a worse situation. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, the Emu War was, like, uh, in between, uh, well, no, it couldn't have been, I don't think it was that long ago. I want to say it was in, like, the 60s. I'm looking it up. Because they had, um, they had machine guns on, oh, no, you're right. Never mind. Uh, November 2nd, 1932 to December 10th, 1932. Also, oh, it also is known as the Great Emu War. Okay. Um... Yeah, it was a military op uh, operation to address well, public concern over the number of emus said to be running amok. <laughs> and the, the Australian military lost the war. <laughs> uh, it's almost... Almost as embarrassing as uh, the Bucket War. Is the Bucket War? Is that what it's called? Hold on, I'm gonna, I'm gonna get a proper name for this because this is this is incredible. Um, the War of the Bucket. It's actually put in the same category as the Emu War because it's one of those ridiculous uh, conflicts. So, there's an amazing op oversimplified video going over the entire history, but effectively, it's, um... 
in northern Italy, back when Italy was a bunch of different uh, city-states, this was in uh, 1325, there were these two towns that absolutely hated each other. Um, and they had like this long-standing like bitterness going between them. And then at some point, someone stole the other town's main well bucket. And it, it went, um, the hatred overflowed and it was actually a battle with like a couple thousand people with actual like full-on military like gear and uh, like a couple dozen people were killed <laughs> it was called the bucket war history is nuts it is ridiculous tone but totally happened I'm telling you go look up the oversimplified video after my stream, obviously. It's absolutely hilarious. Like, it's tragic that people actually died in that conflict, but, you know, that was 700 years ago, so, I, you know, I feel like I can laugh now. Uh, <laughs> it was absolutely stupid. <laughs> What's going on there? I don't know, I got a bunch of stuff I gotta clean up. The molasses flood in Boston. You you would think I would have heard of that. No. I can believe that it killed people. Molasses is super thick. You could if there's enough molasses, I can totally see people drowning in that. That's completely believable. Molasses flood. Do you know about a decade after the American Revolution, my state, Rhode Island, had a full-on uh, attempted uprising against the U.S.? Like, we tried to have a second revolution? I don't remember exactly the details as to why, but yeah, that totally happened. It's like a million gallons. Yeah, that would definitely kill a few people. Like, I, you know, I'm not surprised at all at that. 1920s. Yeah, something was roaring, that's for sure. Okay, so we've covered the Emu War, the Bucket War, the Molasses Flood. <laughs> Any other ridiculous- oh, oh and uh, the Rhode Island um, Uprising. <laughs> Wish I could remember why there was a Rhode Island Uprising. One, do the Wikipedia. The Door Rebellion. Is that the right one? No, there isn't- there was an earlier one. There was one like the early 1800s. <laughs> Cause it's Rhode Island. Yeah, you got that right, Justin. I mean, that that's enough reason in itself. It's Rhode Island, that's up, right? May as well. Everything here sucks. 
Kind of like the door rebellion. 1841, 1842 is intent by disenfranchised residents to force broader democracy in the U.S. state of Rhode Island, where a small rural elite was in control of the government. Yeah, that makes sense. Sounds about right. I don't think that's really changed. <laughs> in all reality. Like, at this point, um, Providence is all but, um, openly corrupt. <laughs> How's it going, Justin? No, not R.I. No. Yeah, no kidding. Yeah, Moon, you think you got a uh, boxer bone is pretty crazy? I know that name. What was that? Oh, I gotta go back to Wikipedia. I'm really glad I named like I named in the schedule the second stream as freeform because man, I don't get a lot of painting done. It's in the chat with you people. Boxer uprising, 1900. Uprising against foreigners occurred in China by 1900, begun by peasants but eventually supported by the government. A Chinese secret society known as the Boxers embarked on a violent campaign to drive all foreigners from China. Wow. That does sound pretty crazy. Sounds about right for early 1900s though, that kind of everyone is doing that. I mean like, everyone was doing that. <laughs> Guy just claimed he's the son of Chase. There's a dude in Mexico, right? I think it's I want to say it's Mexico right now. It says he he is JC. He is the, he is the big one. He's the big one returned in human form for a second time for some reason. And you know what's crazy is thousands of people believe him. Or are you saying just like just now claimed he's the son of JC? Like people be crazy. I mean, you and know Justin, you live in the middle of most of them in Pawtucket. <laughs> I mean, okay, true, you don't, but you spend most of your actual time in Pawtucket, so, you know, just saying. The white never actually wants to fully come out of these sable brushes. I missed anything? Anything highlight? I think I missed that one line. Or one edge. No, but I will. I will, Justin. That's the difference. I will notice. The camera will notice. No, I know Plasma won't notice like half the crap I put on these guys. That's okay. Some of it's just for the camera. In my own professionalism, I have to redo a bunch of this pauldron because it got so humid in here just like ran off it 
Which is ridiculous, because it's like three coats of corn red, like, come on. Fourteen thousand BTU AC currently going into a twelve by thirteen area. Well then, guess what I got for AC? You guess? Lots of heat drawing stuff in this area, Anita. Yeah. Now all I got for AC is my own chat energy. <laughs> Myself insisting I'm going to be stronger than my environment. <laughs> That's my AC. <laughs> fix the pommel and I gotta re-highlight and then top coat the shoulder the red should probably dry more okay. all right so I need that belcher base I think I'm gonna spend some time tomorrow finding some more tracks to put on this playlist. There's only like <clears throat> a dozen or 15 tracks on this playlist because I'm picky. Had those so long as the Adamus is badged in the arm, meaning it's from the launch of Nice No More Recipe Commissions. Yeah, no kidding. But to be fair, the only one of mine that I've painted since Indomitus is the Captain. It's actually right here. If not, I've not touched any of my other um, Indomitus models yet. Really proud of the scripting on this guy. The way, the way could use an update. That was my old white. Old white techniques. Old red techniques, too. Yeah, anyway. I, um... Oh! Uh... Yes, just did win the Krons. And, you know, I'll totally do those on a commission, because I can whip out so many of those. Um... Oh, you'll love this, Justin. You know, you keep joking on me about giving me more White Scars commissions? Guy actually sent an inquiry earlier, today. Uh, so he was in the stream earlier this afternoon. Um, 
for a uh, doing a white scars gravis captain at a super high um, detail level. But the way he described it, I was like, wow, actually, that sounds really cool. I actually want to do this. Unfortunately, he gave me the wrong email or like an incorrect email. So unless he comes back into the stream, I have no way of continuing that conversation. <laughs> Yeah, it was going to be like, so these are like tier 3, you want a tier 4 with like freehand and everything and some light conversion work. Um, I was going to, I was going to charge him a few hundred bucks for that. Um, it's actually, ironically, Kassar Economy, I get to him, is going to be tier 4 too, but it's, it's fine. Um, but I could see it all in my head, I'm like, wow, this thing would look so cool. But, uh, yeah. Can't, uh, can't give you my quote if, uh, my emails don't get delivered. <laughs> Gabriel Angelos. Uh, isn't that a Blood Angels guy? Gabriel Angelos. That name really rings a bell. Hold on, give me a second. I'll look him up. Blood Ravens. Oh, the Blood Rangers Chapter Master. Uh, yeah, screw it. Um, how detailed you want it? Not derpy face like a GW one. Well, I mean, yes, I can do a... <laughs> oh, I won't focus. Yeah, no, I can make it, I can make it look good. Came to me with a picture. That guy. Ooh. Um. Yeah, that that face ain't great. Oh, I just realized he's supposed to be clean shaven. I thought that was I thought that was a beard. That's pretty rough. <clears throat> yeah, we can throw a new head in there. I could even like modify a head, make it look like that. D oh no. <laughs> Mm. <laughs> so, uh, so yeah, you know, the big question is how detailed you want it. Actually, that was the only bit that really needed a new thing right there. I mean, here's the other thing. You're asking me if I want to paint X? If the price is right, I'll paint anything you want. <laughs> Price is right, I'll paint more white scars just like this. I won't be super happy about it, but I will. The right amount of money. At this point, that amount of money might be like a thousand dollars in salt intercessor, but no, I'm joking. <laughs> Probably should be. Takes me, takes me on average like three days to do an assault intercessor. Grant, I could probably do it a little bit more quickly, but, um, yeah. Okay. Ink. Oh, yeah, I can't see. I can't see my feed because I got Gabriel Angelos in my face.
Yeah, Justin, why don't you send me a picture of what your Angelus looks like right now? So I have, uh, I have, like, I'm way out of frame. So we're out of frame? Um, <clears throat> so I know what I'm working with. Alright, I think I just got clean up on this guy and then uh, transfer. Switching some army war paint him at white. Is it just me or did it get very quiet in here? And a bunch of people talking and then just y'all left me. Ravioli, making me jealous. I can't even eat ravioli. I'm sure it's good. I'm sure, it's very good. <laughs> you know how long it's been since I had ravioli? Like, eleven years. Ravioli. Uh, ferns. Done. That's, that's like literally, yeah. Ferns and pine cones. That's what plants, dinos eat. It's nothing else really existed yet. Broadleaf trees weren't until way later. Flowers only popped up in the Cretaceous. The ferns. Everything was ferns. Nothing but ferns. Oh yeah, not even mushrooms. Mushrooms weren't until the Cretaceous either. So yeah. Jurassic, all ferns. Just ferns. You also eat pine cones? Well, that explains a few things. <laughs> Hashtag spelling. Yeah, I gotta update this playlist. I've only streamed like 15 hours and I'm already getting a little sick of some of these. We know they're really good tracks. Oop. Really just dragged my brush handle against my phone. I'm gonna come for you, Moon. No, I'm paying my bills. My bills are getting paid. Not always sure how exactly I pull it off, but they get paid. Also, of course you can't spell, but you can pay your bills when you're working for a non-profit that works more or less for the government. They don't need literate people who work for the government.
Hmm. Right. I need some of this later. Get up in here. Right here. Okay, so you want to fight tonight? I see. Okay. Okay, okay. <laughs> Listen, Moon. Just because you're a girl that's taller than me doesn't mean I'm intimidated by you. <laughs> Also, I know why you're angry, because you know what I'm saying is true about most of your co-workers, from what I, from what I hear from your stories. <laughs> I should be. And here I thought the first rage quit on my stream would be me. Not sure why I'd be rage quitting exactly, but Nah, I shouldn't be surprised. I usually have that effect on people. I wanna rage quit my life. Alright, I think that's a finished in sword. Time to... my camera just... fell ill. Alright. Oh, hold it together. Come on, OBS. I think it's OBS, because my camera looks fine. Anyway. Nope, still having a problem. Alright, I'm just going to start putting a hard code on it. Because, jeez. Also, rage all you want, Moon. You're still a hostage. I won't let you leave the stream. You're stuck here now. Also, yes, this is what happens when you bring up ravioli. That I've not had true ravioli in 11 years. And my camera's really just having a hard time of it. Alright, anyway. So that's gotta dry. Next piece. Oh, Moon, Moon, it's your. You can put me on a shelf. <laughs> it's your favorite emote. I would really like to know what's going on with OBS. Do I need a... Alongside the elf on a shelf? I thought you were gonna make me into the elf on a shelf. But not how that works. I'm gonna try refreshing... My iPhone... Cam. <laughs> Gun. Yes. Ah, yeah, no, I'm- it's either OBS or it's Twitch, it's not me. I fixed my stuff. Alright, let's get on with the shoulder trim.
to a moon. Uh, I know we're dragging a resting into it. Who else is um? Who else is coming to a spirited away viewing party? Surprised Joe isn't popping off. Doesn't Joe like anime? Mega's work. I mean, that's fair enough. Yeah, why, uh, <laughs> what, um, what brought that train of thought? Is there anything specific? Sorry, drinking what? Did you spell that right? Is that silk? Or did you mean milk? Like, I've never heard of what, what silk is. I don't know what this is. It's apparently a programming language. I don't know. I don't know what, what he's actually drinking and why this is concerning. Um... Oh, I forgot about that because it is such a uh, heresy. That just escapes my mind immediately. And yeah, I thought you might have had some kind of specific thing popping up. Or for that, like, I don't know. It got, you got an upcoming date with a chick or something. <laughs> what? Go, just go get a date. What's your problem? It's easy. I might have one Monday. 
Not sure yet. Yeah, I'm probably I'm probably gonna skip my second stream because I don't know how else I'm gonna make the scheduling work. Well, I, you can say that. It's not going to stop me from trying. <laughs> no, it just happened ironically. Uh, couldn't make it happen on a weekend. I'm like, all right. Very well. No, I was thinking of stream Monday afternoon. Which of those, Justin, that left? <sighs> the guy just called his bluff on me painting one of his minis. Yes, uh, so like the, it seems to me from me looking in the back end, the two biggest numbers I want right now is simultaneous people, uh, or like average number of people watching, and uh, length of time, length of time, a high number of people are talking at the same time. And I don't know, it's hard to say. It says like, you had this many people chatting at the same time for this amount of time. Kind of thing. Like, those are like the primary um, requisites, like the, the difficult requisites I have to hit to become an affiliate and unlock bits, which apparently you actually get paid like a little bit for when people use them? Generate them? I'm not totally clear on the system. Alright, give me a second, I'll bring up the, uh... I'll bring up the screen that tells me all that. Let's see... Add to affiliate. I've hit stream for 8 hours. I need to hit 50 followers. Um, stream on 7 different days. I'll have that by Friday. And then 
average of three viewers in um i guess across 30 days i'm not entirely clear I guess it's like average number of viewers is like a big one. Right now I'm sitting at 1.92. So. So, Moon, your mission? Go get me more people. Drag them in here. I know you're a proficient slaver. <laughs> Which is like fake social media to me. I didn't, uh... Like, I'm, I'm mostly a YouTube, um... Uh, like consumer, so I don't know a crap load about Twitch either. <laughs> That's your work. Hard part is, is like I'm in a bunch of Warhammer discords, but most of them don't make it like easy to promote yourself on them. You gotta be really around, uh, or like if you can promote yourself, you can promote yourself like once. It's not like, hey, come check out the stream that's happening right now. You know. I do think a lot of chatting, though, does help me rise in the, like, in the search thing. Not search results, because you don't really search, it's more like, rise in the category, I guess. Alright, do I do... Metal next or black next? Thinking metal. Get this lead belcher going. I'll let that red dry a bit and I'll probably have to do another coat on it because it's really not, it really doesn't want to stick. I will accept your Dorito of Contrition. The Contrite Dorito.
Hey, Tone, you still there? How's that venom crawler coming? Get the fish, the the fishy, the fleshy bits figured out. that work done is that a brush for ants um yeah i could tickle an ant with this a bigger ant tickle him right under the chin this antenna starts flickering this is a size this is a size one actually this is not even um i have a smaller brush than this Do you, like, just actually look at the stream for, like, the first time? You've only been here for an hour and a half, you just looked at the stream, because I've been using the same brush for, like, everything. You accidentally left? You leaving me, Moon? Yes, yeah, another Dorito of contrition. This is acceptable. I'll do this to remix up for it. <laughs> Uh, if you keep believing like this, eventually I'll have a bag of them. And I'll finally be able to eat. <laughs> I had leftover rice tonight, actually, so I'm, I'm doing pretty good now, good. A nice fatty piece of roast. Pretty good. I just realized it's actually pretty cool. Um, hey, Moo, you know my whole plan of if my parents uh, move south and everything, I'm gonna sublease the uh, the other rooms. I just realized <clears throat> that if all that happens and nothing else happens, like significantly financially for me, I'd at least be able to get my food stamps turned back on again. I won't be living with my parents. Uh, you know, regardless of what the actual situation is, like me paying them rent and everything. Um, because that's how Rhode Island does it. Just, if you're over 23 and you live in the same building as them, that's it. That's the only requirement. You're shut off immediately. Yeah. That's a nice, um... 
really actually all my food. I can totally eat within the amount they give you per month. Uh, so I don't even have to worry about those, like, those expenses anymore. That occurs. Which, actually, that causes a whole, um... Chain reaction. Where, if I kept the same level of expenses and removed food from the equation, I might be able to afford to get a car on payments. Well, a cheap one, anyway. Yeah. It's starting to look better all the time. This is all like worst case scenario backup, like you know, none of my other shenanigans pay off in any considerable way. That's just something I just realized. Yeah, I have an emergency plan. Do I, at any given time, I have like three contingency plans, okay? That's how I roll. You got it when you're like a freelancer. You all know what's going to happen. Yeah, right? No, totally. I have multiple backups on, well actually when I say like three contingency plans, it's more like three contingency like groups of plans because each one then has different tiers of how much did this go to crap and what do I do about it. Which you think would leave me, like, more rest assured that at least I have some kind of plan if things go badly? No, because all those plans, like, suck to actually follow through on. But not fun. Like, the lower the risk of failure on the plan gets, the worse my life becomes, like, just on a psychological level. I will still, like, live. I will still exist. But it really won't be a great experience. That's why I push every day in the meantime. The point that's probably unhealthy in my... Psychologist is consistently asking me if I'm actually doing okay or if I'm overworking myself because I can't stop. Hey, it's fine. Considering how the stream is going since Saturday, I'd say something's paying off because I'm making a lot more progress than I expected. Honestly, like way more. Because here's the thing, I don't know if I ever mentioned this, but one of my first brands was on YouTube. I did Let's Plays. Which is a terrible idea, by the way, because it's super saturated. It was even super saturated back then, in like 2014. I made vids, like, half hour to 45 minute long Let's Plays. Heavily edited. Decently well produced. For the time, you know, for my skill level. Um, about two years, just under 200 videos. 
That's how many subscribers I had when I gave up. Finally. 87. Two years. All my free time. While working, uh, working at least one, if not two, part-time jobs. Um... So the fact that like in four days I'm at 14 followers, that's pretty good. And with Twitch, I actually have a lot more methods of making money than I did on YouTube. I don't want to... OBS sounds to a hard time. Huh? I've told you before, nine businesses I've gone through now. This is technically part of number eight, and number eight and nine might end up getting merged. Although if you count the real estate stuff, that would make ten. But if eight and nine do get merged, being this and my merchandise thing that I just kind of have on hold since like March. Um, if I merge that with this, then yeah, I'm back to nine. So we'll just I would just get rid of the name of the merchandise thing and just absorb it into basically tabletop. <clears throat> but uh yeah here that guys there's gonna be basically tabletop merch and there's already several designs already made i just gotta set it up and change the uh, brand names on them and i'll be hosted on my own website so all the you know whatever you're paying me is you know paying for the merchandise you're paying a little bit to print full to make it and the rest of it actually goes to me instead of like Etsy or Amazon or whatever other like, storefront you don't need a storefront when you're a web dev you make your own Nothing else pops up uh, this weekend. I might I might start working on that this weekend. The merchandise store. I mean, why not? People could be, you know, any individual person coming in here might want some kind of merch when it has like funny designs on and stuff. It's not just my name on it. I think that's kind of corny. I share with just my name on it. What? Why? No, it's like buy a coffee mug that says uh, warning. This is a coffee mug, not a paint, uh, a brush rinse cup. Which, for the record, uh, looks like this because it already exists. Like I said, I just need to set up the uh, store. And no other. Hobbyists understand that reference. I also have several shirt designs, I have some D&D related designs, I have an Among Us design. Among Us coffee, uh, yeah. Among Us coffee cup that says I'm sus until I've had my coffee. The fun bit is actually not even setting up the web shop store and everything else. It's figuring out how to set up some kind of advertisement inside Twitch that I can just hit with a button. What is that sound? You would, you would actually suplex me if I had that cup. Which cup? The Among Us cup?
Hey, I'm on Instagram. I, uh, hold on. <clears throat> I've not had it made before. Uh, not had any made yet because no one's ordered any yet, but design exists. I'm pulling it up now. <clears throat> All right, man. I will. Um, I'm just gonna Discord you the uh, the picture of the design. Um. But yeah, I'll see you tonight for the movie. Wait, don't I just have that in a file somewhere? Oh yeah, right here. <laughs> Alright. Anyway. Enough shenanigans. Back to the stream. Back to actually doing the thing I said I was gonna do. Just paint a thing. What am I doing? Alright, painting the black. Which is going on very, like... Thin. Not, it's not being very cooperative, in all reality. Got a whole bunch of Abaddon black on his palette, and I'm just gonna go up stuff. What keeps making that buzzing sound? Peace. I don't know. Weird. my phone going off. Yeah, hold on, this is still work. Uh, it's actually... It, yeah, it was my phone. I don't care about any of that. was causing the red and the uh culture and the rub off actually it keeps rubbing against my finger which i'm sure the sweat on my finger is not helping things
think it's just you and me, Tone. I think everyone else left. <laughs> oh boy all right so including this guy i have seven more assault intercessors three more outriders three blade guard veterans blade guard ancients primaris chaplain on bike and Kasaro Khan. Probably going to take me another few months. No, I did not get paid enough for this. That was my fault. The plus side. He is, uh, the client is extremely patient on this because of the detail level. Yeah, no kidding. I know exactly what caused this commission to be a problem, and I will not be making that mistake again. And for the time being, I am getting very, very, very good at white armor. <laughs> Actually, the base coat is airbrush. Um, so, what I do is I prime with Dino Res, um, Dino Res airbrush. Oh, yeah, because of the focus level. Um, Dino Res uh, airbrush primer. It's actually designed for airbrushes. I thin it down even more, and I do do a bunch of very thin layers, and then I base coat it with also very much thinned down um, army painter, matte white, and a bunch of thin layers through an airbrush. And then I go in and um, go in and do the brushwork. So, is it a case of a lot of thin layers? Yes, but with the caveat that it's not a lot of brushed on thin layers. Or for me, it's less patience and more just OCD. I, my brain requires of me to do high quality jobs with just about everything I do. It's not a job done until it, wor until it works as expected and looks amazing. Which has really helped me uh, narrow down what fields, uh, like what industries I should work in. Because, man, some industries do not like that uh, outlook. A lot of my first jobs. 
uh, my early jobs had problems with that. <laughs> like, why can't you go faster? I'm like, because if I did, it wouldn't look this good. Except look that good didn't mean nearly as much when you- I mean, they did appreciate it somewhat in and of itself, but, you know, um, in regards to, like, uh, when I, I- At one point, I was running a furniture department at a home goods. Um, the department always looked great. Um, sometimes it was even clean. <laughs> but, uh... But the, uh, the product arrangements were always great. Spot on. But every once in a while, someone would get annoyed. Stuff I was doing was taking too long. And oddly enough, it was an issue when I was an electrician. I'm like, you really want me to like speed this up and do this wrong of all things? Like, I'm installing fire alarm systems. Like, I don't think you want me to screw that up. <laughs> Especially now in Rhode Island, just some of the like strictest fire code in the country. Yeah, what it is is it just comes down to money. But all boils down now. These are, um, so I use both, uh, just depends on what I'm doing, like, right, like both of these are Monument Hobbies Pro Series, one is synthetic, one is sable, sable is natural horsehair, um, if memory serves. Uh, I use stuff like the, I mean, I use synthetic for stuff like, um, dry brushing and, uh, digging paint out of, out of pots that are not very liquidy yeah um and spreading washes and inks and stuff over larger areas um most of my work i tend to just use a sable because it better control better precision um if you do take care of them correctly you can make them last very long uh like i've only i've been using sable brushes for uh a year and a half now, and I've only had to replace one brush, and that was after I hit a, its year birthday. Which, um, from what I've heard, average expectation of a sable brush is like six to nine months, if I remember correctly. So I guess I'm doing something right. A bunch of like red on this white right here, yeah, like red flakes or something. Raphael 8404 keeps learning its but no successive usage of Metox hasn't been nice to it. So, I've heard that name a lot before, Raphael. Um, I've also heard people saying you shouldn't use metallics with sable brushes. I use metallics with sable brushes. Don't have a problem. But I'm also very meticulous with my cleaning of them. So I wonder if that's why and people having a hard time with metallics like getting stuck in their brushes is simply because they're not cleaning enough. Where it's not as often or not as thoroughly or whatever, they're not, uh... They're... You know, you can do it. I do it. I do it all the time. I just painted the lead belcher on this with my sable brush. Not a problem. And like, I paint, like over the winter, I wasn't painting as much as I was working on a really big website job. But besides that, I mean, like right now, I'm painting every single day for hours a day. Even like most of my leisure time is me painting my own stuff. 
Like I really spend most of my life right now with a paintbrush in motion. And uh, yeah, they're still holding, the uh, brush is still holding strong. gonna put a few more coats on this corner here that keeps rubbing off a second it comes near my fingers Actually, there's, um, that black's thinned out. I think next I'm going to do Eshin Gray on the gun as the highlight. You know, the Dawnstone as the itch highlight and the highlight for the, um, joints. And then I'll Nolan Oil them and the joints and the gun metal. And while that's drying, I'm going to do the um, edge highlighting and top coating of the shoulder tree. That I believe is the plan. So I've been hearing the Chaos Space Marine Codex has been really strong. Have you played any games with it yet? Ah, uh, no worries. I just mostly voiced out my plan for um. Oh well, I'll start at the beginning in response to your your brush comment which was um i've heard of Raphael before i've heard they're good brushes however i've not had an issue with metallics wearing down my brushes i use metallics with my with my sable all the time um 500 points of raven guard 300 points of chaos yeah fair enough um if you're looking to win play chaos right now raven guard are not doing great currently Sometimes I miss having a small, manageable size of figures like that, that in theory I could actually catch up with painting. Yeah, I, I've heard the Chaos Codex is really, uh, really effective, let's say. <laughs> Won a GT recently. Yeah, like, I have, um... I have a Google Doc that tracks my entire Raven Guard collection. 
I just surpassed 200 models recently. I once calculated out that if I kept up my old um, average of a unit or a project, um, you know, like let's say a data sheet, a data sheet a month uh, from like two years ago, I calculated take me, so 2020, it was like, It's like around like summer 2020 and I calculated out if I did like a unit a month it's, and didn't buy any new models of which I have gotten new models since then. <laughs> Not a lot but some. Um, it would take me until like March of 2024 <laughs> to catch up. And my painting has only become, for my own guys, it's only become more complex and uh, yeah. Um, yeah, I'm gonna pull it up. It's kind of fun to look at your collection as a, uh, like, numerically. Maybe that's just me. But, um... These numbers still don't add up exactly. I don't know how, like, this has happened. Where... So I have, I have five categories I use to keep track. I have total models, I have fully painted, I have unpainted slash unfinished, fieldable, which means they are built enough to actually put on a table, and unbuilt, which is stuff that cannot be put on a table. Somehow in those five categories, no matter how many times I recount all the stuff that I've got listed, these numbers don't actually add up, but here are the numbers I do have. 205 total models, 67 fully painted models, Unpainted slash unfinished is 105. Um, which unpainted unfinished is like... It, it's not unbuilt, I'd say. Um, fieldable is 172 and unbuilt is 46. So in theory, if you added the fully painted, the unpainted, and the unbuilt, you'd get 205, but you don't. <laughs> Yeah, like a hundred and like twenty or two hundred and twenty or something like that. I don't know why I can't seem to. And this is like a huge document. This is like, what page is this? Oh, it feels like a huge document. It's five. It's five pages of like just units and descriptions of like how I am building the different companies because I'm assigning units to specific companies in a more or less uh, lore appropriate fashion. And um, with this, the centerpiece being the third company, majority of um, my models and I think I have now a sign but not actually completed uh, the entirety of the third company, I think. I have to double check that. But, um... But yeah, at this point, there's no version of me, like, ever catching up. Because here's, here's the funny thing, right? If I got... Let's say I, I achieved the income where I didn't have to work. And I could just paint my own guys for, let's say, let's say I took like a sabbatical, like a long one, like let's say six months, and just paint my own guys because I had the money where, uh, I had the income where I didn't have to work and I could just paint my own guys. You know what would happen? Because I had that much income, I'd be buying new stuff. I'd be trying my hardest. I wouldn't buy a lot of new stuff. I'd definitely be buying some new stuff. My Age of Darkness box has my name on it, and I really want that Kratos tank, too. I can't afford either of them right now, but jeez, do I want them. Like, unless I seriously started playing Horus Heresy, which I may, because uh, I do have local players. Um, yeah, a bit of a backlog, <laughs> no kidding. Um, 
You know, you know why it's so big too? Is not even because I have a buying problem, because I actually have bought very little of that out of my own money. A lot of that is gifts or um, like painting for models. Like most of my armory, like vehicles, most of my vehicles I got through paint for model deals. There's also a lot of trades. I've done a lot of trades over the years. Like every time there's a big multi-faction space marine box, I'd get it and then trade off the non-space marine faction for like the equivalent of like the se the uh, the space marine half at least. Half the time I get more than that in space marines. Like when I trade the Indomitus box, I got the entire Space Marine Indomitus a second time minus the assault intercessors and i got an extra unit of a uh minus both sets of assault intercessors so i did not get the assault intercessors from either space marine half i didn't really want them i didn't need more troops uh raven guard i don't think i have a lot of use for the melee guys ironically now i do have them but they were a gift um the uh and I traded that for, so, all of the characters, the Outriders, the Blade Guard, the Eradicators, a, a third unit of Eradicators. Now I have nine Eradicators immediately upon Indomitus dropping. Um, and then, uh, and then the Sprues from the Infiltrator Incursor box. And I'm trying to remember what I got for the Chaos Half of Shadow Spear. Hmm. Yeah, right? <laughs> yeah, you, you wish. Now, here's the thing. I don't have a storage issue yet, and I have a lot of patience. <laughs> I don't think there's any, uh, I don't think there's anything I would, like, flat out detract from my army, except maybe, like, my Reavers, because they're completely and utterly useless, and I actually have to repaint them, because they're one of, some of my first, first builds and first painted models, so they look like crap in both regards. Like, I hate them. Um... Like, they're gonna look, like, if I ever get around to actually doing them now, they're gonna look absolutely amazing, but I don't know when I'd ever do them, because they're absolutely, completely useless on the tabletop. Uh, at least in, like, I mostly play larger size games. And, um, yeah, Reavers have no place in, like, 2K, 2K point games. Just hot garbage. Oh yeah, I just remembered. Um, I was thinking, maybe that Infiltrator Incursor sprue I should make into incursors and continue with my plan of how it's going to make them I originally was going to make them a very aggressive looking infiltrator unit I was thinking maybe I should make them incursors and, and that goes with the aggression then I remembered I popped off all of their backpack scanner pieces to make my hell blasters assault uh hell blasters like the the assault plasma eradicators or whatever for the triple shot so, I'd have to find a way of fixing that. I mean, I could probably just buy the bits, but... Eh. Yeah, Reavers are due to the Skull Helmets, and... Uh, man, they are bad. So, I got the Codex right here. So, first problem, they are an Elite slot, which... Space Marines have so many Elites vying for that... that spot it's absolutely nuts um like i said it? it's like nearly half of all space marine options are elites uh, if you don't count characters if you count characters then it's like a third a third of all space marine options are elites 
But here's what you're getting for that loot slot. And, you know, they are, like, decently cheap. But what you're getting is an Intercessor stat line. You know, standard Primaris Space Marine stat line defensively. Uh, and offensively. And then your guns are either... Um... You, uh, so they all have this special issue bolt pistol, which is 12 inch pistol one, strength four, neg two, damage one. Decent pistol. It's one shot. Um, and then they can have with that either a combat knife, which all it does is it just gives them plus one attacks. Um, like a strength user, AP zero, damage one. So they're just punching just more often. So a standard Reaver has three attacks, four on the charge. They can replace their combat knife with a bolt carbine, which is an assault two bolt gun. 24 inches, two shots, assault, strength four, AP zero, damage one. So very lackluster weaponry. All the models in this unit can be equipped with one Reaver Grav Shoot, which gives them Deep Strike, or one Grapnel Launcher, which um, they don't count any vertical distance when moving, advancing, or falling back, so akin to like if they had a jump pack. Uh, and they have the outflank ability, which means they can do like the, um, the, tactic the strategic reinforcements or whatever it's called, where you come in from the sides of the field. Um, for free. But not free, because you have to pay for the grapnel launchers. Um, then they have the Terror Troops Aura. While an enemy unit is within 3 inches of this unit, subtract 2 from their leadership characteristic, uh, from their leadership characteristic of models in the unit. Which you can stack these. They also have shot grenades, which is a stratagem where that denies uh, Overwatch. So here's the thing. Their weapons mean that they are only good against light infantry, of which there's only a few armies in the game that have true light infantry. Which is like, guardsmen, uh, cultists, um, Tau, fire warriors, um, and I guess like, Wrath World Eldar, like guardians, basically. Well, they'd kind of do good offensively against, like, a lot of the other Eldar, Craft World Eldar units, but they don't def defensively, so it doesn't matter much, because they'll be dead soon in any way. Um, terror troops, like, sounds cool, but leadership means nothing. It never has, like... You know, you'll lose a couple guys of morale here and there. Even, like, really big things that potentially could lose a lot to morale. Most of them have ways of completely negating morale entirely. Like, Tyranids. If you have a synaptic creature nearby, one of the big bugs, they don't care about leadership at all. Flat out. Necrons don't care about leadership at all, ever. Um, Cultists, I... You'd have to correct me. Um... But I'm pretty sure they have, like, some abilities that remove their leadership issues. So, like, Guardsmen and, like, Fire Warriors at that point. Uh, like, Tau. Uh, most other... Factions in the game... Don't care about... Leadership, really. I mean, Custodians is, are so high that, like, minus two means nothing. Um... Yeah, like they have, like they have poor leadership, but I'm pretty sure they have different abilities of just removing that as a weakness, effectively. Plus, are you gonna use an elite slot, a Space Marine elite slot, specifically to combat cultists? Cultists. You have 101 ways to kill in cultists. Jeez, bolt guns kill cultists, and we get that in droves. Like, it's not hard to kill cultists. Why do you need leadership bomb for a cultist? <laughs> Just good for obsec. 
you mean cultists or uh which like obsec is important um yeah or meat shield right uh yeah it's like um but here's the thing we don't need some we don't need a unit that is only good at killing cultists because we have 101 ways of killing cultists that are also good at killing other things not to mention a lot of our like all of our troops all of our troops are good at killing cultists like even our worst troops like tactical marines like a 10 stack attack marines with a combi grav a grav or not even grabs actually you'd probably just use let's say i wanted to really go up like against cultists uh from range probably cultists are toughness three so yeah probably a combi plaz plasma gun and grav cannon and then the other seven bolters like <laughs> um intercessors with auto bolt rifles just hammer away incursors get in close and chop them up as literally as good as the reavers do because they have the same they have like this like all the same melee stats in fact i think their melee is actually a little bit better and they have better other abilities and they're i think actually cheaper infiltrator squad um No, I infiltrate in cursor. Um, paired combat blades. Oh, they don't have extra in an extra attack. Instead, they have neg one AP. Even better, act like actually better. Uh, in this case, um, and they have opsec. Infiltrators have like decent shooting, and uh, they have an, they have their auto wound capability. Um, and then like probably the worst ones at killing cultists are the heavy intercessors. Because um, best case scenario, they have the hellstorm bolt rifles for assault three five hundred ones. But I mean like heavy intercessors aren't you don't get them to kill stuff. You get them to slug. Get stuff stuck in because they can't kill them efficiently because they're gravis. And there's a lot of them, which unfortunately, for them being good at getting other things stuck and trying to kill them, they're not good at melee. So they're not gonna hit back. So they're only good against stuff stuck on them. Or camping a. Uh, background objective with long-range weapons but you could probably do that better with a uh, attack squad and just give them like a last cannon although really now after the point changes the uh, eliminators are actually really your best bet for um sitting in the back of an objective picking stuff off at range give a squad of uh eliminators um three last fusils well, those are slightly shorter range maybe keep the mark the the sniper rifles Man, this is really not, this is not going up clean at all. I need to put, like, thinner in there or something. Vindicare? I don't, um, I've not played with the Vindicare, so I don't really remember his rules. And yeah, I have two squads of, uh, Eliminators. I, I like them. I might start playing them again. I hadn't really played with them much in, in ninth because, uh, characters don't matter as much as they did in 8th. In 8th, I would terrorize my local store with Raven Guard Eliminators because they get so many um, bonuses uh, in Tactical Doctrine because of surg Surgical Strikes, which ironically now because of the changes they've made to Eliminators, they effectively don't need those bonuses anymore. Um, or they, they, wouldn't, they wouldn't gain anything from those bonuses. Like, I guess plus one to wound is nice, but um, it doesn't help them get more uh, mortal wounds anymore, and they're already two up to hit. So I guess unless there's a minus one to hit in play, um, it's not, you know, that's not helping them. Which I guess there could be a neg one in play when you're talking about characters. 
I do miss an eighth though the times where if I lined everything up right I could have a four up to mortal wound on an eliminator which was utterly ridiculous no wait no I could get up to three up three up to mortal wound on an eliminator Grand, like the going from four up to three up was way harder than getting to the four up, but it was still possible because there's um, there's a chaplain uh, thing that uh, gives plus one to wounds if you're shooting the closest available target. So it'd have to be the closest available target had to be the character you're targeting, but you could get an additional plus one to mortal wound, which was how it worked back in eighth. The uh, Chance of a mortal wound on their primary bullet type for the sniper rifles used to be six plus or a six up, not a uh, not an unmodified six like it is now. I'm having a really hard time with this Dawnstone. This Dawnstone just really just not want to play nice right now and get some fresh fresh Dawnstone. <laughs> What's that? Abaddon Black, Eshin Gray, Dawnstone, Forex. Wait, oh, you mean um the gluggy ones? Uh, my Dawnstone actually ain't that gluggy. Ulthwin, yeah, no, I've got a pretty bad pot of Ulthwin. Celestial, yeah, Celestial too. Um, fortunately, I haven't really needed to use those much at all in a long time. But uh, but Corax White, it's um pretty rough in there. I have to use that constantly. Yeah, it's just a mess. I have to dig it out. Like, man, I haven't even opened my Celestia in, like, a year. What does it look like? It might be fully dried. Oh, no, it's, it's like, separated. Where, like, it's... Yeah, that's... I gotta get that, like, machine that has, like, the vibro thing on top that vibrates paints, like, super effectively. Fortunately, that machine's like 200 bucks, so that's not going to be anytime soon. <laughs> oh, maybe I'm remembering a different gadget that's like kind of the same thing that I'm, I was wanting. Oh yeah, it was a machine that you could use to grind down um, excess filament or like bad prints from a... Uh, from like a standard plastic 3d printer back into like pellets that then could be turned back into filament that would that setup was like 200 bucks and the other thing being 30 sounds more realistic still not at the top of my priority list though <laughs> more like next month's bills is kind of higher priority <laughs> Yeah, and I do have, um, I do have some paint marbles going on. If you hear me, if you're clacking when I'm shaking, that's because I do have some marbles happening. Yeah, the Raven Guard not doing good right now because the new CP changes really just broke probably the most e efficient list I could figure out out of months of theory crafting and like a half dozen games of experimentation. Um, for a long time, standard Raven Guard's best bet was a really heavy alpha strike that uh, could do a crap load of damage and like wipe out whole swaths of the field and just hope that was enough while um infantry infiltrated inf infantry um just sat on objectives from you know the beginning of the game and uh you know kind of just hope that was enough to carry it 
and uh but but to make the most out of that um it was a vanguard vet bomb that's how you do all the damage get the most out of that. it's like a 14 step combo that uses like seven cp by the time it's finally done um so you'd have like no cp for the rest of the game basically or no significant amount of cp but it could do a holy crap amount of damage yeah, so this is what my list used to be for 2k. Um, Cave and Strike. Um, Jump Pack Chaplain with Master Sanctity. The uh, Swift and Deadly Warlord trait. Uh, and Wiser Raider using Master to try Forward Path for the two Warlord traits. You'd have the trade Benediction of Fury, which is a like significantly upped uh, Croesus weapon. Um, he would have Exhortation of Rage and Mantra of Strength as his, uh, as his, um, abilities, you know, whatever. Uh, and a Primaris Tech Marine, which only has one blowed out, so he's just that. Um, I would then have two five-man squads of Infiltrators with the Infiltrator Comms Array, two five-man Intercessors with Auto Bolt Rifles and a Chainsword. I'd then have 10 Vanguard Veterans with Storm Shield and Lightning Claw, a Relic Contemptor with the Missile Pod and um, Twin Volkite Culverins. Oh, nope, that was Eshen Gray. I just picked up. I want more Downstone. Uh, then it was uh, a Relic Sakaran Venator. Which is the Horus Heresy tank, that, but the Tank Destroyer variant, so it's just a giant beam cannon. Um, and that would have Heavy Bolter and Storm Bolter on it. I just dipped into the Ashen Grey again, jeez. Then three Eradicators, uh, two with Melta Rifle, one with Multi Melta, and then a Storm Raven gunship um, with. The Hurricane Bolter add-ons, Twin multi melta, and the Heavy Plasma Cannons on the top. And it also automatically came with um, missiles, like big missiles. And the idea would be info the two Infiltrators on objectives, uh, with my Intercessors uh, at the front of my um, line, to move up unless one of them was sitting on an objective. Uh, and that was depend on what the enemy list looked like and if it looked like they were a deep strike threat. Uh, I would use Infiltrator three times, the stratagem Infiltrator three times to move up Cave and Strike, the Vanguard Vets, and the Jump Chaplain together um, up as far as possible to get as close to whatever seems the biggest like clump of priority targets and then when the game started i would then you know jump forward and advance um although i didn't even usually always need to advance but i had a swift and deadly trait which gives the chaplain a six inch aura of advance and charge i didn't always need it in fact sometimes i uh sometimes i was within one inch without even advancing or like add one inch without even advancing so like just from the double move basically um if that was the case then i could you know th throw a crack grenade with the vanguard vets in addition to the other stuff but usually it would just be the um chaplain shooting with uh, i'd give him a combi melta because the melta is actually an assault weapon so you can shoot it even when you advance and even though it's one shot, it has a chance of, like, potentially just outright killing something. Even something big. Because it's a Melta. So, you know, it can do up to six, uh... Yeah, it can do up to... Wait, can... Standard Meltas do eight damage? Because the Melta rule? I think they might. Melta gun. Yeah, they can do up to eight damage. So... So you can nuke a light vehicle with a single shot from just the chaplain if you get lucky. Uh, and Shrike's also shooting with his pistol, which can do mortal wounds. Uh, yeah, no, I just checked it. Um, uh, Melta gun. 
Um, okay, so... Like, against vehicles? Depends on your distance. Because mountains have short range, they do way more damage and way more consistently. Because most vehicles are either T6, T7, or T8. Um, there's only a couple T9 vehicles in the entire game. One of which being the Chaos Land Raider, which is a little ridiculous. If you ask me, I think all the Land Raiders should be T9. But, um, so 8's enough. 9's just bonus. 9 gets you a lot more range. But has a lot less consistent damage because most last cannons are D6 still. While Meltas, if you can get them with like under half range, you can their damage die turns into D6 plus two. So you have a minimum of three damage a shot, a successful shot. So like a twin multi melta, which is four shots, can nuke like decently regularly nuke a vehicle. Just flat out, just, just immediately. Um, four last cans on the other, on the other hand, not as often. And yeah, they have a lot more range, but, you know, right now, if you just want vehicles gone, you take Meltas and you figure out how to get them close. If you want something that's specifically gonna sit a long way away, then yeah, last cans are fine, but... Last cans, they were the go- like, last- like an 8th edition, last cans were the go-to. Um, were the go-to for anti-vehicle. And that's because the Melta rule used to be, if you're in half range, you re-rolled the damage die. Um, that and a lot more stuff was T8. Then in 9th edition, they made a lot of T8 stuff T7. And they gave the Melta rule its current rule, which is at half range, it's D6 plus 2. Because back in 8th edition, nothing had the, like, rules like, um, damage die plus this set amount. That wasn't a thing in, in 8th edition. So pretty much everything was D6. The last cans could do it at 48 inches and in strength 9. So all these toughness 8, uh, vehicles, last cans gave you a long distance response to him. So like the Relic Contemptor in 8th edition was all about those uh, dual twin last cannons. So you had four last cannons on a Contemptor and the missiles. That was the, the old go-to. Um, now it's Volkite's because of the Mortal Wounds. But um, but if Volkite didn't do Mortal Wounds, it'd be twin multi meltas and they would become like short range like skirmishers like, running at vehicles to get into Melta range and just nuke something with four Melta shots. So right now, you don't really see last cans that much because of that. Though you might see a fair bit of the Chaos last cans on, like, say, Land Raiders because they just got a set number plus damage for their last cans, which might be spraying out to the rest of everyone else that has last cannons, but we don't know yet. So until then, Meltas still dominate the anti-vehicle, like, game. Like, um, actually on my, um, Storm Raven, I can actually get two, uh, two last cannons on it. And instead I have the, um, well in that specific slot, instead I have the heavy plasma cannons, because that's... In total, 2d3 shots, um, strength, if I overcharge, it's strength 9, uh, I want to say, actually, hold on, I don't know why I'm guessing, I can pull up its stat line right here. Storm Raven, twin heavy plasma cannon, supercharge, 36 inches, heavy 2d3, strength 8, neg 3, 3 damage, blast. So I usually use them on, like, medium to heavy infantry, though occasionally on a vehicle I really want gone. Um, and then for the fronts, I use, uh, you know, it could either be a Typhoon Missile Launcher, which is, um, you know, it's just two missile launchers, like standard missile launchers, or Twin Heavy Bolter, or Twin Multi Melta. Always Multi Melta, because suddenly now you're... Now your um, 
when that's combined with the storm strike missile launchers it's wing wing uh mounted uh missiles which are two missiles at strength eight neg three damage three combined with the heavy uh the multi melters you have a legitimate like anti-vehicle platform on top of anti-infantry between the plasma and the hurricane bolters Not to say the Storm Raven's like amazing, I just really like playing that playing that um that model. I mean it's not bad. It's like it's reasonable when used correctly with other stuff. Yeah, and they look cool, I mean. After the Vanguard Vets, I'm probably painting the uh, Storm Raven next. I was tempted to start the Storm Raven before the Vanguard Vets, but I already had two and a half Vanguard Vets painted from like forever ago, so I picked up, picked those back up. Oh yeah, so big. Uh, I'm looking forward to starring either Dark Apostle or the Warpsmith next. The Warpsmith looks really cool. Um, do you have the Master of Possession? I'm assuming so, because you have a Venom Crawler. That sucks, man. Um, I watched Auspex Tactics Chaos um, thing the other day. Ah, that's how you got the Venom Crawler. But yeah, I watched um, Auspex Tactics um, video the other day, and it's like he normally does like um, D to A tier, but he had to make an S tier specifically for Abaddon and the Master Possession because both of them are like auto takes, especially for Black Legion. Like you, you want Abaddon like as soon as possible. Like no joke, if I actually did start a Black Legion army, which I have thought about because I really like the Black Legion books, um, by Aaron Dembski Bowden, uh. <laughs> Abaddon's be scared to painting him. I would, I mean, obviously I, I have a better stance to stand from in that regard, but <laughs> I, uh, yeah, I've thought that if I was gonna do Black Legion, like, my, f like, granted, I do still have the Dawn, um, Dawn, Dawn Guard, yeah, freaking Skyrim, the Death Guard from Dark Imperium, but if I were, like, legitimately doing Black Legion, I would start with Abaddon. Like, that that would be the first thing I got, was Abaddon. And I'd paint the crap out of him. Alright. So I gotta do the... While it's drying... Do these, uh... Things. Here's the problem, though. Time and money. And I got a huge Raven Guard collection. Like... I don't even have the money to get the Raven Guard stuff I really want that I could really use. Or like really, really, really want. Not really use. I mean it's, it's I don't need it, but I really really want it. <laughs> I have a Discord notification. Oh, question of the day. Well, it's not for me because right now I'm in a specific, a, a like very complicated financial situation where like I am on I'm like effectively on borrowed time financially and uh, I need to just 
focus on bringing income in and whatever income I immediately get is just padding out how much time I can afford to not get conventional employment of some kind which my initial plan it's so like as it stands right now if nothing changes financially which I have multiple things in the works to change stuff financially just none of them have like amazing odds of success but if um, nothing changes financially between now and the middle of August or towards the end of August really um, I need to start looking for I'll start with remote tech support jobs like like help desk type you know people calling tech support you get the you get the call and you you play that guy basically um, because that's that's the easiest thing I could like immediately get into and get decent pay without having to worry about transportation or anything because I'm a freelance web developer so like tech is kind of one of my go-dos um, yeah, right, like, it makes total sense you should be able to do that from home. Um, I don't want to do that on any level. Um, that kind of work sucks. I'm good at it, I'm very good at it, but it sucks. And it would slow down all the other stuff I'm doing, or trying to do. So, I'm focusing everything... And, that, and that's giving me a month to solidify that before the beginning of October comes, where effectively um, I would start like really hurting financially if I didn't have any more income coming before then. Um, because all my monthly bills effectively happen the first 10 days of a month. So, like, I can get... I'll be able to get through August, I'll be able to get through September, when the beginning of October comes, like the last day of September marks like, like I'm, I'm, I wouldn't necessarily be screwed, but I'd have to make a worse sacrifice if I didn't, um, th a worse sacrifice than if I, uh, if I got the tech support job. So that's why I'm doing this, because if I got Twitch up to affiliate, I could get money from bits, I could get money from tips, and best case scenario, like the actual good like money early on, is I get another commission or two. Because usually the ones I get are, you know, large enough uh, monetarily that, you know, I, I have very low living expenses um, because of the nature of being freelance. <laughs> Uh, and how the economy's been going down. But I also am working on getting into real estate investment, and I only need one or two of those deals to happen, and in theory, I wouldn't even have to, have to take contracts anymore because the scale I'm doing them at. But it's the way I'm doing it, it's possible, but it's, it's really about finding ev like a situation where everyone wants to play ball. The numbers work, it's just very unconventional. Um, so you're really fighting against people's ingrained conventions about how real estate's supposed to work. But pretty much everything is just trying to pad out time until I can get my first couple deals under my belt. But it takes months to do, uh, to get a deal going and then actually close it. So the recession and the mortgage don't like mortgages don't even affect me much in the way in how I'm doing it. Because I'm using um, what's called creative financing. Like I'm not getting standard mortgages. No one can get standard mortgages and make numbers work in rental, long-term rentals, which is what I intend on getting into, which is just standard landlording, but with multi-families and apartment buildings. The, lar the actually, the more units in a deal, the more efficient the actual, um, the more efficient the uh, net operating income situation is. Like, in a, in a single deal, I try not to 
like go beneath four units like like four or four tenants because under that you start you start becoming riskier way riskier um but you can't do mortgages because the interest rates are jumping up and even with uh rents being extremely high as well so are a lot of the expenses like building materials for repairs or expansions are incredibly expensive right now for many reasons etc so um you know there's a lot going into underwriting which is basically like plotting out all the financials of a deal like you know how the how much money is going in and out of a building and then how much of that money you have left over to play around with financing with un with uh, creative financing you have a few different methods um that don't involve standard mortgages um my favorite one is seller financing which is uh effectively the owner finances the house you pay payments or uh, like on whatever terms you you know individually negotiate between you um you know, directly to the owner and they you know they hold a promissory note over the building and if you default they can foreclose on you just like a bank can you know they, they keep whatever money they got to that point and they just uh have the house again you know just put back on the market um, right now, if people were actually thinking, sellers were actually thinking with their heads and not their hearts, but unfortunately that's how it all goes, um, that's the only way left for these sellers to get these large numbers they still want because the average, you know, the average buyer can't get mortgages and make everything work anymore. So they're not gonna get giant chunks of cash more often than not unless the person was using one of the other methods which is private financing which is just individual people or companies that specifically do this kind of stuff um putting forward the money for repayments through whatever means later um that way you can get giant chunks of money the last one is kind of like a variation on the seller financing, which is called sub two, which is if they have a mortgage on the building, you effectively just take over paying the mortgage in their name. They keep the mortgage, but uh, you partially, it's usually like you partially seller finance and you partially um, sub two or, um, you know, wrap around is the other name for it. And I've been working on trying to get something since the beginning uh no since like the end of may so uh two solid months now and the hardest part is just getting people to actually like listen to this and like look at numbers like i don't even put any actual f like investment into a deal until i've done an extensive amount of underwriting to ensure that the uh the money would all work like i have to know that i even could come to the table with like reasonable numbers as someone with no upfront capital and uh it's like listen all these numbers work i have this all planned out i have a property management company ready to take over management i have the insurance the whole, the, like the house insurance figured out um uh like the lawn care snow removal everything everything's everything's factored in figured out i have down to like you know margins uh you know margins of error in the tens of dollars in properties that are moving you know like 12 fifteen thousand dollars a month through um most of which into people's pockets and uh but you know People want to stick with what they know and what feels safe. And it's like, no, make money. Like right now. <laughs> you know, you don't want this building. And you don't want the building in like a way that has nothing to do with the building itself. You just don't want it. I want it. And I can make both of us a lot of money off it. 
Like, I'm effectively offering you, like, a retirement fund. Like, the equivalence of a retirement fund. Like, someone could retire on these amount, on these kinds of numbers. And they just don't... They don't want to listen. Or, or if it's not them, it's my agent. It's, like, my agent. My agent doesn't want to continue... Like, doesn't want to go through with my ridiculous ploys. I've gone through, like, a bunch of agents. It's like, yeah, I know conventionally they'll just... Out of hand... Like, not less than any numbers that don't have proof of funds with them. But I can't get the proof of funds unless I get a number they're willing to sell in. Like, it's just, ugh. Oh, that's pretty cool. I'm, uh... You may have heard me talking to Moon earlier about, but I've been an entrepreneur for... Jeez, like... Eight years? Something like that? I don't know, I'm starting to get a little tired, so my math's getting a little fuzzy. I, I don't know, seven, eight, nine years, somewhere around there. I've, um, if you count the real estate as, like, a legitimate business, which I do have an LLC for it, I would make ten businesses, brands, or monetized projects I've done over the years. And the thing is, like, I, I, you know, at this point I always do a massive amount of homework before I start doing something. Uh, that's why, like, this stream looks this well-produced on my fourth stream. You know, I don't just run into stuff. <laughs> um, I will take what looks like really big risks, but it's because I've done a crap load of math on it. Like, I mean, some people have called me flat out like, you are insane to try that, and I'm like, I'm not, though. Thanks. Um, no, I appreciate that. I really, I really try to have high production value, I know. And whenever I do media stuff, which has been multiple times now, uh, I like, I like making media stuff. Um, alright, that's the shoulder done. No, no, it's the right arm. I think it's just the white armor. Oh, wait, no, I have to do the, um, I have to do the edge highlighting on the middle. <clears throat> so yeah, and lately with the uh, market correction, like, in theory, there's chances for, like, really good opportunities, but I haven't seen a lot, like, much pop up in my area, which I'm trying to do a few deals in my area before going, like, fully remote on real estate. So it's something close enough to me that I can put my hands on while I'm learning all the ins and outs and stuff through actual experience. Like, I've been studying the concept of real estate since, um, like, March. Like, every day. Uh, I've gone through, like, nearly a dozen books now. Um, dozens of podcasts. Uh seminars uh business books not even just not even just real estate but like business books uh sales books um like in march like end of march beginning of april i just like had just a moment of i need to change how i'm how i'm uh approaching money like wholesale and uh i remember like as a kid my dad would like got, uh, like, forced me to read, like, Rich Dad, Poor Dad for teens, or something like that. And I was like, you know what? I know that book's super popular, so... I have something to it, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna get the actual Rich Dad, Poor Dad, and pop it on Audible and see what happens. I've listened to that book three times now. Um, and a bunch of Robert Kiyosaki's other books, for that matter. Like, yeah, it all makes sense to me. Just trying to put in action in time for me to not run out of money and have to join the workforce again. Because I believe if I can get enough time outside the workforce at the rate that I work, which is like 14 hours a day. <laughs> 14 hours a day, six to six and a half days a week. Um... I am more likely to get into a much better position long term if I can get enough time not forced to use up a ton of time and energy 
in a normal job where I might just end up getting trapped. Psychologically, energetically trapped. Comfortable. Gross. Sorry, it's, it's gross to me. I know that's where most people are, and like some people are fine with that, but I, I can't. I've become, like, my actual nightmare, like when I'm sleeping, that like haunts me for like a week after I dream it, is being back in a normal job. Like the ones I had when I first got into the workforce. Like I've always had psychological, emotional issues. Like, like, chronic psychological issues when I had, like, normal employment. Yeah, right? Which for me is... Not having a standard boss, not having a standard work schedule, or not, not like, um... A mandated work schedule, like someone else mandating it. I need to, f like, yeah, I can have a schedule. But it's gotta be a schedule I pick out based on reasons that make sense to me. Or else it just gives me anxiety the entire time leading up to when I'm supposed to clock in and then I can't stop thinking about clocking out. And it actually like deter- it like, um, lowers my work output. It's actually easier for me to work completely without any schedule at all and just like work to work like just i'm just gonna work now and i'm just gonna, just gonna keep working and then i'll just you know work for 14 hours a day <laughs> yeah occasional collapse and like a burnout thing for you know a few days and then you know i stop and i rest for like you know two to three days sometimes i can't even last that long last time last weekend actually i thought was gonna be that I was like, well, I'm just gonna take the, in it was like Friday morning and I'm like, I feel like I could die. So I'm just gonna take a three day weekend. I took Friday completely off and then Saturday I got inspired and started putting this stream together. Like all of this production started Saturday morning. Like that's just, that's what I do. I got just enough rest, got inspired and then went to like hyper productivity. Thanks. I, I appreciate that. So yeah, I, I, I scheduled 72 hours of, of downtime. I barely lasted 24 hours before I was back in the grind. So it's not like I can't have a job because I'm lazy. It's just my brain don't function normally. But how are you gonna find consistent pay that like pays you for stuff like that? It's actually, I wouldn't even want consistent pay. I want something where I'm making uh, cash flow. Every time I do work, it's towards increasing passive income. You know, that, that's one of the biggest things. Uh, oh man, I gotta redo that. Do the barrel I rubbed off. Some of the lead belcher. Um, with rentals. I do all this work, I get a deal. I now have a I now have X amount of cash flow. I do another deal. I do all this work. I that now stacks as a second set of cash flow on the first one. And it just builds from there. I do the work once and then I get paid for decades. You know, until I sell the until I sell the house, really, which I don't really see why I would sell one unless it turned out to not be a good uh, deal in the first place. Which is fine, that, that happens. Um, you know, instead of dragging buckets, which is what hourly work is, or sales, or, or anything like inventory, you know, um, whether it's for hours, or for contracts, or whatever, it's dragging buckets. Instead, I want to build pipelines. I do all the work to buy a house, it's set up a pipeline. I then go off and build another pipeline. 
that makes sense to me. And it really doesn't have to be risky if you do it right. You learn how to appropriately underwrite your con uh, underwrite your your deals, and you get property management companies to handle your day to day stuff. And that's part of your that, that that's a standard part of my underwriting. Like if um, it has to be able to afford uh, afford a percentage based maintenance um, safety net, a vacancy safety net. And um, property management fees, in addition to paying all of its standard bills and um, def and having a good amount of financing uh, wiggle room in for our negotiations, and then pay me a certain amount so that day one the amount that goes into my pocket is enough to combined with the maintenance and vacancy eggs to cover any like ridiculous over-the-top problems that might crop up in the first 30 days between check one and check two so like there's like four safety margins uh or you know um contingencies built into the system you know I guess there really isn't a whole lot of traffic going on on um, Wednesday nights. Or I guess Thursday mornings for you, right? Yeah, that's what I thought. It's uh, 10 p.m. here. Got another hour. And then I'm off to get dinner, and then um, half an hour later, it's probably why I'm still eating dinner, doing that, uh, yeah, right? <clears throat> Although, I mean, I paint all day, but <laughs> I usually, um, even before I was streaming, I would usually, uh, I'd be through my morning routine sometime between noon and one, and then I'd just, I'd just start painting, and I'd stop around 11. So, so, yeah, I mean, I've been thinking about streaming for a while, but for different reasons I hadn't started yet. And I was like, all right, time to start because, like, I'm doing this anyway. This contract has to happen regardless. I wonder if I can finish this arm. Or, uh... Yeah, 
Hit me with your Venom Crawler question. Let's go. Oh yeah, I should probably legitimately clean up this shoulder pauldron before I go in with these. Has these vents slash ports on the side of the body, which are like exhaust ports, I think. They let kind of are uh they kind of are meant to appear hot. Do you think I could paint white and shade yellow and orange and red? So hundred percent shade one hundred percent of the yellow, sixty percent orange, and thirty percent red. Um, so if you're using shaders, <clears throat> yeah, no, I totally get what you're going for. Because you're using shaders, uh, which generally, um, I mean, they're washes, but they're, they're always, with GW shaders, they always lean towards darker. So we generally want to do, let's see. Yeah, actually, no, no, now I'm think. now I'm, uh, I, st I started over in my mind imagining, like, I had to reread what you said. Um, paint it white, shade the whole thing yellow, then, like, a ring around it orange, and then a small, like, an edge ring with, uh, red. Yeah, that probably would work, yeah. Yeah, do that. That, that should work. I'd, um, how I usually do stuff like that, that's actually how I make my eyes. Um. Uh, no, that's not a good example. Let me get, let me get one that came out really, really well. At a certain point, I started, like... Okay. It's so, like, the eyes are my strike here, right? What that is, is that Cord Red, Wild Rider aren't, uh, Wild Rider Red, um, in like a smaller bit, and then Flash gets yellow in a smaller bit, and then a tiny dot of white, and then shading the whole thing with, um, Blood Letter. So the red mutes everything down. But it already has a gradient built in through paints, which you can um, control a lot more. And you won't have when it when it blends that way, it the single shader will blend everything um, uniformly. Well, if you use multiple shaders in like ring patterns or square patterns or whatever, you have a chance of the edges of them being washes, being liquidy, having that 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 hard line of. Um, that, that hard line of the edge of a liquid drying in a larger amount than, than it started. Or than, than like the middle. Do you, do you know what I'm talking about? Blood letter is a glaze they don't really sell anymore. But what you could do is... Um, I think just your red shader is still fine. You might have to do more of the brighter colors than like this. I mean, th these are eyes, so they're very small. Um... But uh, glazes and washes are, like, or glazes and shades are just all washes, effectively. Um, just shaders usually have a bit, like, shaders have a darker hue of the color in question, so they shade things. But glazes and shades are all just washes, and then, um, yeah, like, yeah, no, that's it. They're all washes. Shaders have darker hues to shade things. Glazes have more saturation to color to color shift things. Um, we're getting into like uh, paint theory, but uh, like there is some chemistry to it. 
But if you want a uniform, if you want a uniform exhaust thing, what I do is actually paint it all white, then paint your your other layers with normal paint and use a single wash over the whole thing so it it blends everything uniformly um yeah yeah that that's how i do that's how i do that stuff oh yeah this artco was like dry like a million years ago uh <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm gonna first fix, uh, I think I'm first gonna fix the, um, well, on the other one. Yeah, I mean, this is the great thing about paint, is that if it doesn't work, you just paint over it. You know, you should never feel scared about trying a, a new technique with painting. Because, I mean, even, like, even if you build up so much paint, like, it becomes a complete mess, you can strip it. You just get a bunch of, like, isopropyl alcohol or, um, or paint stripper and just strip it and just start over. So, like, you, you never, you never locked in, truly. You're never truly locked in to anything you do with a paintbrush or anything else, uh, concerning paint. Man, too bad I'm not wearing my Bob Ross shirt for that, for that speech. Did my descriptions of like how all those paints work and stuff make sense, by the way? Okay, cool. Yeah, no, that's something I consistently want to do with my streams, is teach people. Like, I'm always trying to learn, so it seems dumb to keep that to myself. Like, what, like, okay, I, I know it, great. What about all these other idiots just wandering right now? I'm joking. <laughs> what about all these other idiots wandering around, completely lost, have no idea what's going on around them? <laughs> Really, helping them is helping me, because then I'm not surrounded by idiots anymore. <laughs> Sometimes I just gotta channel my inner Fujita. Oh yeah, totally. Like, honestly... Okay, so here's how I learned to paint. Okay? Flat out. Here, here's how it worked. I painted with no external instruction for, like... A year. And at a certain point, I felt like I had enough confidence. Um... Uh, oh, well, here's the thing. You don't, you don't go looking for, like, how to paint this model. I used to think that way, too. I think that's normal. You don't go looking for like how to paint this model. You you think about what like effects or looks you want in specific places, and then you look up the technique, the, the names of the techniques for how to get those things. Like you want to learn more about glazing, you would look up a, like a glazing theory video. Like what's the theory of glazing? Where are glazing techniques? how to glaze or like what are the alternatives to glazing because maybe instead of glazing you actually want like how to wet blend or um stipple or um how to use inks which i mean are pretty close to glazing anyway they're just more intense um but you, you do have to then learn what names of all these techniques are and sometimes that can take a while because you don't know what you even you'll, you'll know how to you can't look up what you don't know like the name for so that's a little hard but uh but like th this was my train of um 
learning was I painted with like no external anything for like a year and then when I started getting like a little bit of confidence I got on Instagram and started posting my stuff on there and then I started looking at other people's stuff and I'm like holy crap all this stuff looks amazing I want to try this I want to try that just look at the pictures not like techniques or tutorials I was just like that's a picture of a model I want that how can I figure out how to get that look now just try it like, I had one point where I, every single project I took up, like, every single unit or data sheet that I painted, um, had, like, two to five brand new techniques as part of painting it. Um, yeah, right, which is why you then look up, like, what is glazing? Like, 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 Warhammer 40k, uh, or, 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 like, miniature painting glazing. I mean, there's, um... I'll, I'll find I'll find his name. He has this great like guy to do X in five minutes or less, like painting videos, and they're they're amazing. Um, he's and he does like really advanced techniques in like under five minute explanations. Um, like like wet blending, which is a pretty advanced technique. Uh, wet blending in under five minutes. So. Zumikido miniatures. Yeah, it's not easy to do. Not, not easy to say, but um, I'm going to link him because I think he is just that good in the chat. I'm going to link his channel. Yeah, that guy. That guy does amazing guides. I don't do everything the same way he does it, to be clear. Like, I don't, I don't follow like 100% of his advice, but he has definitely helped me with a lot of different techniques over, over the last couple of years. Um, but yeah, it was only when I started learning about, like, the, the names of the more advanced techniques that would go on YouTube, and I'd be like, I want to learn how to, like, glaze. I want to learn how to wet blend. I want to learn, um, where are the different ways of getting this kind of effect, like, glows. Like, where are all the different, there's a bunch of different ways of getting a good glow effect. Hey, Alfarius. Oh, I mean, yeah, that's like what I was saying before, where for like a long while I was just seeing pictures on Instagram and trying to copy them. Like, not copy like tutorials, I mean, I would just see pictures of a model and be like, I want my miniature to look like that. You know, however, and like, so I learned a lot of how to, like, how to think about paint that way. But, um, there are some levels of any skill where formal learning from someone that you know has gone through it way longer than you or like has studied the theory intensely um like it, that helps massively like getting into airbrushing don't do that like blind you know look up a lot of videos watch watch like mini uh like 35 minute long video on on getting into airbrushing uh, before you buy an airbrush, um, or, uh, like, non-metallic metal. There's, like, actual physics involved with painting non-metallic metal correctly. Um, that's not just us. Th like, to do that, like, really well, you can't just jump in non-metallic metal. Um, unless you have an art background already, in which case, you did still have formal education. A lot of the basic stuff, though, yeah, you're better off, like, figuring it out on your own, probably. Uh, more often than not. But, um, I wouldn't say that is true for everything. I mean, I still can't get the hang of non-metallic metal. <laughs> I still can't really do it. I've tried. I've tried a good number of times. I just can't get to stick. But, but I am steadily getting better at wet blending, so maybe, maybe that will, maybe that will just click someday. Because, because there is a lot of crossover between wet blending and non-metallic metal. I mean, non-metallic metal in a way is just a specific kind of application of wet blending. That's just kind of how it is. Um, alright, I'm gonna do... Uh, 
Now I should do I should do this real quick. I should do the shading on the pauldron and then do the transfer on the other pauldron to get that drying. You know, getting back to the thing that I'm supposed to be doing is just painting. Uh, no, <laughs> no uh, do absolutely come to me with questions. I will happily answer them. And how are you off here? Oh, I think he just left. He might not have liked me countering his advice, but whatever. I don't, uh, I, I mean, I just, I just call it as I see it 100% of the time. I don't, I don't play nice in regards like that because I don't think there's a need to. If you have an, um, uh, yeah, go for it. Um, I'll be on for another 40 minutes. Put on a transfer. I should probably just leave an auto. Oh, uh, maybe I'll switch it back when I get back to painting. Anyway.
Man, I should like swap out my friggin' water to transfer. It's so reddish. Water on there. So it can slide around. If I could just get off the sheet. Oh, there we go. Oop. There we go. Looks about right. Then the water, let the water dry, and then I'll put some micro set on it. Okay. Back to this. All right. I believe that's all of the first layer of shading. Uh, second layer of shading. So now I will pull the focus off. Auto. around 30 ish good Anyway, sorry. Uh, <coughs> water. Um, basically out of water. I had to refill, but only on for another half hour, so screw it. I didn't even get back drinking more water, though.
Nice. <clears throat> now, to the back of Templar for the Black Lightning. Oh man, getting tired. <clears throat> At least I'm getting just like normal tired, not not off tired. Like I was getting in the afternoon. That was rough. I might start my streams earlier. Make up for that. It's a heavy bolt pistol. How dare you, Justin? You should know better. Welcome back. You left me hanging. Asked you a question. You fell asleep. Okay, to be totally fair, towards the end of my afternoon uh, stream, actually, Yesterday and today, I was like basically nodding off. I don't know if it's the combination of the heat or the fact that I keep ending up with such a long period between my breakfast and my lunch. Because I kept waking up early, having breakfast at like around 8 or 9, and then I wouldn't eat until my family has dinner around 6. And then I would have my dinner around 11. So I was just like... So it was like... 4.30 to 5.30, like the entire last hour, I'm just like nodding off with a brush in my hand. <laughs> Joe and Adam left us in inventory behind the counter was nodding off. Yeah. No, I can totally understand that. I've done inventory before. That's... Um... Yeah, you can totally nod off doing that. Alright, I think time for highlighting. Uh, actually, I'm gonna get the art code on this, on the pauldron before, uh... Let that dry well. Oh yeah, and the um, micro set on the other one. <clears throat> so yeah, uh, Justin, the question uh, you left me hanging on was if I were to paint your Gabriel Ang uh, A Angelos, Anglos, Anglo-Saxon, um, how uh, <laughs> how detail how detailed do you want that paint job? Like, you know, because it's a character, I'm figuring, like, do you want nice or do you want, like, centerpiece? Depends. On. Store discount. I never buy anything because I don't have any money. I need money right now. <laughs> I am like, I am desperate for cash to the point that I must, I might become desperado. <laughs> That's where word came from. So desperate, you're down in the banditry. <laughs> I need like, I need actual commissions here, Justin. Not favors. <laughs> uh, 
like unless unless the favor is you helping me kill someone, I don't think I don't think that favor is gonna be worth enough. <laughs> I will let you sh I'll let you shoot my World War II rifles. Uh That's tempting. But my good sense is strong. I need moolah. <laughs> I mean, we could always wait on that project until I'm in a better place. But like right now, all that guy in that in that scenario, all that guy is to me then is some extra free advertising. But it's not like I'm at a lack of things to paint for advertising. It's just a different thing to paint. Need to hit the mid state again. My private range doesn't do rifles. Well, that's a s sucky range. How dare they? What's the point? Oh, your private. I just, yeah, I just, I reread that. Or I, for some reason, I thought it was like your your local private, uh, like your local range. Um, yeah, no, I get you. Your your own setup. Yeah, I'm getting tired. So like, don't expect logic out of me. <laughs> Membership only range. Mm. Oh. I get what you mean. Gotcha. Okay, so actually, I was, uh... I actually was on the right thing. I thought it was, like... My, my second wait, second lap around. thought it was, like, your own thing. I am... Okay. Okay, I don't know what this looks or sounds like, but you guys might be on the internet. Say hi. I I actually can't hear you. I, I like neither of you at all, which might be in my own settings. Like, I'm still streaming, is my point. <laughs> uh, yeah. Oh, you know what it is? I gotta turn down my music that's what i thought like you just weren't transmitting but no the music is super loud in my ears even though it's not loud on the stream where is that tab all right let me turn it way down okay now you guys try talking okay moon's fine rusty you are still like on uranus <laughs> yeah i'm gonna double you and then yeah i guess uh Yeah, I guess you can start it, but I'm still streaming for another 20 minutes. Uh, yes, Justin, do please share my commission site to your Facebook followers. In fact, I will, I will send you, give me a second, I will, I will, uh, send you on Discord my link tree with all my stuff, and you can share whatever you want. Just know that my Facebook page is currently broken, so, like, that doesn't really help anybody. I don't get messages through there. And yes, the, uh, like, I'll mute myself in the Discord VC call, because obviously this is disruptive, but... <laughs> okay. Uh, send me some high-res photos. Uh, yeah. Um... Okay. Um, yes, Justin, I will send you, uh, okay. I'll send you a bunch of stuff later tonight. Um, I'll send you my link tree with all my links, um, and I will send you, uh, a whole crap load of pictures. And then you can just pick from whatever you want. So now, apparently, I am, uh, I'm streaming this, I'm talking to you, um, and I have some online friends that we're trying to do, uh, Syndicron- Oh yeah, no, I'll send those. Basically, all of, all of the pics that have my current photo, um, set up with the black, with the black background. Basically, all of those. Okay, that, that's not set. I'm not gonna do the, uh... Um, 
do the micro set. Yeah, I'll send it. Last, I just knocked. I just knocked the chainsaw off the off the cork. Put down auto. I gotta fix that. Uh, real quick, Moon. I don't see anything. You're black screen. I see. I see. Or is it supposed to be all black? It's supposed to be right now, right? Wait, you can. Can you see it or not? I can see your controls. Yeah, I yeah I, I see the controls. I hear the audio, but there's no actual like video content except for the controls in the bottom of the screen coming through right now. That's very weird. Maybe try um hard refreshing your page. Oh, HBO got clever. Maybe. Yeah. Wait, so is that all three different users are just the different Powerpuff Girls? Is that like two of your friends? Yeah. Yeah, no, I can't. I can, uh, we can't watch it. This is, it's all black. They, they, they out clevered us. Oh, no, oh. I, got, I got a bootleg site. I'm sending a link to her right now. Um, okay, so Justin. <laughs> Yeah, I'm using transfers and on um, stuff that has transfers. Like, uh, Josh sent me a crap load of uh, transfer sheets. Now, there is stuff I have freehanded, like the company designations. But no, I'm not going to freehand the, like, the White Scars logo on 32 dudes. Especially because this logo is only going to be on seven Assault Intercessors. Everyone else gets the uh, the actual... Oh, it's not catching. Um, no, I know. I'm just... I like explaining it. Uh, they get the... Whoop. They get the um, molded shoulder plates of one kind or another it's just seven of these guys uh, i ran out of um arms that didn't have shoulders attached to them so i had to uh i had to use the indomitus like the the original ones which have the have the shoulder plates attached that's okay we'll get it done Meanwhile, my friends are realizing that the movie they want to watch is, um, it's on HBO, so you can't actually stream it over Discord, even through screen share, like, they out-clevered that, so it just comes up as black for us. So they're trying to find, like, a bootleg site to get it right now. <laughs> uh, it's funny. You can kinda, can kinda what? All right, I guess I'll put. Oh, not an OBS. I'm not trying to stream it. They're trying to stream. They're trying to do like a Discord, like movie, movie share party. Or are you saying that like through OBS you might be able to get around HBO? Well, maybe, but I don't think the host has OBS. Or even if, I mean, of course she can get it, but that means she'd have to learn how to use it. <laughs> I almost exclusively watch stuff with subtitles on anyway. I'm one of those people. Because I can read fast. So uh, I think it's fine. <laughs> I can read fast too, but sometimes you feel lazy. I'm gonna kill Joe. My, uh, my buddy Justin says have them run OBS screen share the movie, then screen share the OBS screen share. <laughs> okay. Okay, yep. I knew Joe would have it. He's such a fucking weirdo, but 
a use for them. He's an interesting combination of things. You would not expect like someone like. Gee, Jeff you can him. say that again. All things considered. Okay. Anyway, what was I doing? Microset. But does Joe have the English version, or is he such a weeb that it's gonna be subtitled? Um. Let me see. I actually, after doing, uh, just now, after doing the, um, molded pauldrons, apparently they knew someone that had the, had the movie downloaded. It, it's, um, Spirited Away, the, like, classic anime movie. So, they know a super weeb that just has, like, a terabyte of freaking downloaded anime. Anyway. Very classic. Yeah, like, I, I don't even watch anime, but even I saw Spirited Away, like, years ago. I don't remember how or why. I think I was just trying to find anything on Netflix to watch back in, like, high school. So, like, 20... 20... Like, 2010 or 2011, I think. I was just trying to find stuff on Netflix. Uh, so... Um, so yeah, even I watched Spirited Away. But yeah, this whole thing is to try to drag one of our mutual friends into watching it for the first time, and they can't figure out how to play the friggin' movie. No, they're specifically trying to do, unless that's a, a website, they're specifically trying to do, um, Spirited Away, like, that. that's the goal. It kind of sucks that I can't just, like, stream it from my issue, because it's like, I, ch I pay for it, like, why can't I share it with other people? Wait, is there like a something where I can like make it a um, watching party? Uh, hold on. I made. I found another one. Are we in English? Oh, and they're trying to specifically watch the English okay. version. Let's see. Can you see it? Um, watch screen. Yes. Yay. And let me know if you can hear it. Oh, I think they found a version. I appreciate that, Justin, though ironically they were looking for an English version specifically. Yeah, it has the dub. I do appreciate that. Uh, but it sounds like they did find a working version there. They're starting to play it now. Alright, well that's fine. I'm gonna f keep painting for the next 10 minutes, wrap up. And then, um, I guess I'm not gonna have this arm completely done tonight, but that's fine. I, I was pretty close. Actually, after I eat dinner, I might just wrap it up. Um, finish this late tonight. I'm gonna need more Corax weight, aren't I? Hey Moon, you're uh wait, is the chat working? Yeah, uh Moon, you're also broadcasting the audio, so I'm getting like an echo. Oh. Uh I'm guessing just muting your mic, I think we we'll probably fix it.
Oh yeah, Justin, overall, what do you think about the production quality on this? Considering that I threw this stream together, like, the vast majority of it, Saturday. Like, just all on Saturday. <laughs> Nice, good. Um, unfortunately, chatbot's broken right now, but that has nothing to do with me, so... You don't even use a layout. Totally fair. I, uh, I got this one, this service, because I already had Epidemic Sound. I use it for my other work. Um, which is 15 bucks a month. And this service was... 20 bucks a month, but it includes Epidemic Sound as part of it, so I'm really just paying f uh, like 5 bucks a month for all of the all of the Twitch stuff, which is like overlay, chatbot, alerts, like all kinds of crap. Unfortunately, they just put out like the... Yeah, yesterday, Tuesday, they put out an update and a bunch of this stuff is broken. Go figure. Um, I sent him a message that on that and... You know, I'm just waiting for them to fix all that crap, but... For like... Three hours on Monday before my laptop overheated and I had to wait to get a fan pad, everything worked. It was nice. <laughs> I had alerts with sounds and, uh... And chatbot and commands. It was, it was pretty... It was pretty nice. My fiber link isn't working. Are you talking about my uh, link tree? I'm as I'm assuming you you found my link tree somewhere else, like Instagram, and a Twitch link. Twitch link to Fiverr doesn't work. Um. You know what? Yeah, because I'm only a few minutes away. Like I said, I'll get you all that stuff later tonight. I'll ensure you have, like, everything in, like, just a giant package. Um, so yeah, I, uh, don't worry about that stuff yet. I thought it was that. Is it not? Oh. Alright. Oh. Yeah, I don't even remember how to access that specific page, because it's not an obvious page to change links on your, like, profile profile. So, yeah, I'll have to look at that after the- after I wrap up the stream. I just- I just want to hit, um, a full- the full scheduled time. I got four minutes anyway, but yeah, thanks. <laughs> um, today would be... Actually, no, technically I still didn't officially hit eight hours today because uh, I did have like an hour off in the middle of my first stream because I raided someone else's stream. I didn't want to miss them because I've been in their community a little bit and they didn't even know I streamed. And someone else had raided me earlier today and I was like, oh... Last hammer just got online, huh? Well, 
She doesn't even know what's about to come. All five of us. <laughs> us as four hours in the video? Did I start a cute few minutes early? Or maybe I did. I think I did. Yeah, I used the, um... We're starting in a few minutes screen. While I was setting stuff up. You are correct. Now that I remember. You're not crazy, I just have a bad memory. But yeah, I'll send you a bunch of stuff tonight. If you could actually share that stuff to your followers tomorrow at like... 1-ish, specifically. It's like right before my stream. Or like, you know, in the, in the hour or two leading up to my, my stream at 1.30. That'd be pretty cool. Uh, unless you want to do it around dinner time. Yeah, like, uh, I mean, you can do it either the first stream, like, at 1.30 or the second one at, at 7. Um, whichever one you think would hit your people harder. Like, more, more efficiently. I, I don't know what your demographics of followers are, so I'll leave that up to you. But yeah, if you could do that, that'd be awesome. Weirdos, basically. Well, I mean... Welcome to the club. <laughs> also, I love that part of my name where it's like, you could be saying weirdos, basically, or you could be like, weirdos, basically. Like, you're just stating my name in the statement. It it amuses me. Don't worry. Just chat with me. Keep the credit cards in the bank. Kayla, you have to call this guy. Woo! 15k followers. Let's go. I will totally take that. I mean, right now, my... Big goal is to hit affiliated, which one of those is hit 50 followers, and then um, the other ones are more like time-based, so it's not something you can necessarily just hit with a, uh, a single big burst, but definitely wouldn't hurt. Charity made me hit it. Yeah, that makes sense. Oh man, so people are eating Chinese buffet in the friggin' movie and I am starving. Uh, I'm about to go get food. I don't even know if I'm in frame. I'm not even in frame. Maybe I'll start streaming again? Yeah, do it. I mean, why not? If you get me that many followers, then I will, I will forgive you leaving, uh, like, like not attending my streams. And you can go do your own thing. I, I will allow it. <laughs> Falling asleep doesn't count as leaving. I was talking. No, I mean I mean if you start streaming again, where the odds that you're that we're not gonna be overlapping our streams. I mean of course we could raid each other on occasion, but you know. Alright, that's the highlight on that. It's eleven oh one. I am hungry. I'm closing shop. Uh sorry, you only caught the last few minutes. Other other person. Um in here. Um, by the way, if this other person is the one that sent me the, uh, put in a form for the commission for the White Scars Gravis Captain, uh, the email was wrong. I don't know if it was you, it just, I, they just said they were in the stream at some point today. <laughs> Alright, I am closing up shop. Let's get out of here. Where's my, where's my ending screen?
Good night, everyone.